So the Hawkehurst gang was a notorious smuggling gang. Well folks, this is the very last trip for the Little Red Camper. He served us well over the last five years, so we've got to give him a good send off. If you enjoy a little bit of wild camping, quaint Sussex towns, great food and a bit of history, then join us as we take you with us on Little Red's last adventure. So how was your night? Very good. Considering it's the first night we've been, we've actually slept in the van since October and it's now January. It's been ages, isn't it? Uh, you soon get back in the swing of it, don't you? Um, it took me a little bit of time, if I'm honest. Oh, it was fine. The bed felt really comfortable and nice and cosy with the roof down. Didn't feel cold at all. No, I wasn't cold. I think it got down to about um, four degrees yeah. last night. Yeah. The Sands Water Sports Zone. Let's see if the sea's out. It's a bleak old walk along the coast this morning. You've got to be wrapped up really warm for this. Cool, oh, blimey O'Reilly. Time to get back in the warm, I think. Hello, missus. You're nice and cosy in here, aren't you? I am. Oh. All condensated this morning, aren't we? Yeah. The well, old bubble wrap doing its job. It's very misty outside this morning. I was going to fly the drone along the beach. Hopefully mm. it will clear up. We were hoping to get a time lapse of the sunrise, weren't we? There was but no sunrise. <laughs> there was a sunrise because it's all cloud cover, so you can't see the sun. Yeah. But it's um, five past eight now, so sunrise was at 7.55. So my favourite method for this is a blade and a cloth. But in the new van, we will be switching to a karcher, I think. We couldn't use a karcher in this van because our little side windows are too small for it. Plus also there was the hassle of constantly recharging it. I'll stick the aircon on as well, that always helps to get the moisture out of the air. Get you warmed up. Hands up. Yeah, we haven't got a heated steering wheel like we have in the no. car. <laughs> Good little camping spot. You got to be 1.9. We won't be able to get in here in the new van. We made it. We always have a good search online and read the reviews of local cafes before we use them. And this morning the recommendations are to visit Beryl's Cafe, which is quite close to where we camped. So you've got two cafes here and uh, a farm shop. We're going to try Beryl's. I'm going to go for the small breakfast with an extra sausage. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Do we need a cow mug for our new van? A jug, milk jug. Yeah. A bit posh, is not it? Yeah. <laughs> We almost always leave reviews after we've eaten in a place and I can tell you the breakfast here was delicious so give them a try. Next on the agenda was the farm shop where we've got ourselves something to eat tonight. Right we're out the front of the church and we've got to go straight across and it's about halfway. Uh, I think I can see it. Yeah, there's a well-worn path. Yeah, look, all the people coming to pay their respects to Spike Milligan. God bless him. Well, he's got a lovely spot, hasn't he? Yeah, nice, nice sunny spot today. And at this point, disaster struck. 
and our microphones ran out of power. Our next port of call is the ancient town of Rye. It began as a simple fishing village, but soon became a very important strategic port along the south coast. We parked our van in the Lucknow car park, which costs five pounds for as long as you like. Unfortunately though, there is a barrier, but there are toilets. It's rather quiet in the town, and we wondered where everybody had gone. Nice hair, isn't it? Yeah. How much is he? It's only 750. Well, it's not that expensive. I have to keep reminding myself I can't take the money with me when I die. Mmm, now that's my sort of book. Lots of lovely cobbled streets here, but they can be a bit painful to walk on. Something's caught Charlie Brown's eye. What's this? This is an ancient water system that was built in 1735 and the water used to be brought up to this highest part of the town by horse-drawn carriages. Fresh water and free manure. What's not to like about that? This is Ypres Tower that was originally built as a fort in 1250 and has since been used as a mortuary and a prison. And this building on the end was the women's prison. This uh, prison held some notable prisoners, including a guy called John Breeds, a butcher who murdered the local mayor in 1743. Now this church dates back to the early 12th century and has some magnificent external arches to keep it standing. Look at that swinging pendulum. This is the oldest functioning turret clock in England, dating from 1561. This is St Mary the Virgin Church in Rye, dating back to the 12th century. The church suffered a lot of damage in 1377 when it was attacked by the French. The roof collapsed, the bells were stolen and a lot of loot was taken. There's a replica here of a knocker that used to be on the north do door. And felons could come and knock the knocker and then they had 40 days to seek out a coroner, confess their felonies, and leave England by a stated port. Seems fair enough to me. We should bring that back. I haven't seen a KFC yet. Or a McDonald's. No. It's a beautiful place to walk around, isn't it? Yes, I definitely recommend coming here to Rye. Every building is interesting that you to look at, and there's so much history. Mmm, Cornish pudding. Now we've got some very fine clothes here, and I think I need to up my game ready for the new van. What do you think? Now this is an interesting shop, but we didn't get a chance to go inside, so I looked it up on the web. Wish I'd gone in and had a look now. When I saw this sign about John Fletcher, I thought he was involved in some sort of plot against the king. Turns out he was a dramatist. He used to work with Shakespeare, and some even say he was better. Today though, it's a restaurant, and their menu looks rather enticing, so maybe we'll have to come back and try it one day. Let us know in the comments if you've been there and if it's any good. I wonder what it's like living in a street like this. I bet you can't do anything to your property without jumping through loads of hoops. This is Mermaid Street, a delightful cobbled street that's hardly altered since the 14th century. And behind me is the Mermaid Inn, which is England's largest medieval building. In the 1750s, this was the home of the Hawkehurst Gang. So the Hawkehurst Gang, 
was a notorious smuggling gang. At its height, it had over 500 members. They used to smuggle tobacco, wine, spirits and brandy. And here's the menu for the Mermaid Inn if you're interested. The inn also dates back to the 12th century and it's had a rather turbulent history. The smugglers would sit in here with their guns and cutlasses on the table, deliberately left there in the open to intimidate the locals and make them keep their mouths shut. It's also supposed to be haunted. This is Lamb House that now belongs to the National Trust. This was once the home of Henry James, the author, and he used to meet with Rudyard Kipling here, apparently. It's built in 1722. George I stayed here when stranded in a storm. We've got a beautiful old grammar school here, founded by Thomas Peacock. He was a cleric elected as president of Queen's College, Cambridge in 1542. Such a shame, isn't it? Such a beautiful old building, and now it's selling CDs and LPs. No idea how old this knocker is, but I like it. The town has lots of these little cut-throughs, which I think could be quite creepy at night. Every time I see these things, I want one for the van. This is the land gate built on the orders of Edward III during 1329. It's the last remaining of the four gates. We're back again because last time our microphones failed. Terence Allen Spike Milligan CBE and there's something written in Irish that's translated means I told you I was ill. <laughs> Apparently there was a bit of a row at the time when this gravestone went up that they didn't want the joke on there. But obviously, well, m maybe that's why it's in Irish. That's why it's in Irish. Oh, well, he entertained millions, didn't he? It says here he was a writer, artist, musician, humanitarian, comedian. And I know he served in the Second World War as well, so he had quite a life. He certainly did. An accident on a bend. I think I'll put on my hazard warning lights. At first, it just seemed like it had broken down. But as we passed it, we could see it had quite a significant failure with the front axle. Well, we hope they're all all right and they can get their car fixed ASAP. We haven't been up here, have we? In the car, I don't think so. No, I, we've walked here along the South Downs Way yeah. and walked through the car park, but I don't know if we've ever driven here. start the climb up. It's a steep old hill here so at this point I just put it into first gear and let the engine drag us up at 2000 rpm which is the kindest thing you can do to it. There's other campers here. And some massive potholes. Medium slab for me bunny. Got to watch my figure. Stop sniggering. So what cake is this? Ginger cake from the farm shop. Mmm, yummy. Just imagine the butter's too hard, isn't it? Somebody just said on YouTube, did they, did they see us in Rye at 1 p.m. today? Well, you certainly did, sir, because we've been there filming. Say hello if you see us. We always like to meet people that watch the channel. Carol likes to ask them for money. <laughs> Telling lies. Yeah, I thought the butter would be a, a challenge, but thank you very much. Stops it being so dry. Yeah, it does. The ginger cake can be dry. 
but this one was absolutely delicious. But it's very nice cake. Good. Lovely, very nice ginger taste. Mmm. Butter makes it. What do you think of the cake? Delicious. Nice and warming. Yeah. Gingery. Lovely and soft. Mm. Did you have butter on yours? Mmm. Mm. So we've come to Bo Peep Car Park, which is located in Alciston. It's a free car park, which provides an opportunity to enjoy the scenic views and the natural beauty of the South Downs. All being well, this will be our last night in Little Red here. Darkness fallen. Outside it's below zero and the sound you can hear is our LPG heater. We haven't got the front screens in so Carol's using her head torch to read a book. For our last meal tonight I'll be cooking these beautiful wild boar sausages that we got from Salt's farm shop this morning. I'm cooking them on the lowest heat possible to make sure I keep all the lovely juices inside joint cooking exercise tonight cooking one of our favorite spaghetti meals are you enjoying your last night in a little red camper bunny well we're cooking up a lovely meal yeah um, we're gonna celebrate but it'll be a bit sad <laughs> last night we're spending in the van yeah yeah it's been a good van isn't it brilliant yeah we've had so much fun no troubles Oh, touch wood. Touch wood. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, it's been no, a very reliable very van. Very reliable van, yeah. And not just the van, but everything inside the van. Yeah. Pretty much. Yep, so, as good as the day we bought it, really. Yeah, considering we've had it over four years. Yeah. So, what's your favourite memory from being in the van? Mm. I would have to say Norway, I think. That was the most spectacular trip we've done. Well, the time that I always comes to mind that was I just felt was just so perfect was that trip we did where we got into Spain. Oh yeah, yeah. And we were parked up in the fi pine forest right on the top of the cliffs, mm. and there was no one else around. It was yeah. Really peaceful. The, the weather was just nice. Yeah. Just mild weather. And it was so relaxing. We spent two nights there, didn't we? Yeah. I think these sausages are done. So I'm going to set them aside now and cook up some spaghetti. We'll just use the bowl that we're going to be eating out of later. Okay, that's all the bits from the sausages. You're going to put a bit more oil in for the onions. Now I'll put some fennel in. That's your favourite ingredient, isn't it? I love fennel, yeah. It's loves my favourite so, seasoning. About that much, yeah. Just add it to the onions. Perfect. We're going for a fairly intense, thick sauce that sticks to the pasta. These are really nice. They're stuffed with um, red pepper and almonds. Yeah. A few olives can make a massive difference. These are boar sausages, aren't they? Yeah. From the farm shop. Yeah. These are sausages. That's looking tasty already. Having a feast. Yeah. Right, we need to put some of this chicken stock in we get from Sainsbury's. Okay, so the sausages and the onions and the olives are all in a bowl now. We're going to set that aside and we'll mix it all in with the spaghetti once that's ready. We like to use more chicken stock rather than salt for the spaghetti. So we've got this device made by Joseph Joseph that um, gives you portions of spaghetti. You just dial how many people you want along here. We're going to do one and a half with ours tonight. 
the portion size. Okay, we've got the spaghetti and the mixture back in the same pan. We're nice, giving it a nice stir and we're going to put the lid on and uh, bring it back up to temperature. Get some of this in without making too much of a mess. We always think it's better if you can leave the spaghetti a little while in the sauce to allow it to soak up. Poor sausage spaghetti. It doesn't look much but it's absolutely packed with flavour. So what's the verdict? Mm. Delicious. And how's the boar sausage? Mm. Mm. It's good, isn't it? Mm. Really tasty. Just what you need on a cold winter's day. Yeah. Last meal in Little Red. Mm. Cheers, Bunny. Cheers, little red. Thanks yeah. for a lovely four years. Right, so we're going to attempt our bread and butter pudding, which mm -hmm. is the first time we've cooked it in the van. Yeah. So I'm going to try and butter this bread. Yeah, butter's a bit hard, isn't butter it? Butter has been at like zero degrees temperature. Yeah, just put lumps on, so it doesn't matter, does it? just to be lumps, but it'll all melt in the Yeah. Cooking. So then I'm going to put the bread and butter into the Ridge Monkey, mm -hmm. sprinkle it with some sugar, add the sultanas, yeah. another layer of bread and butter. Yeah. And then we're going to pour over... You're going to put some cinnamon on as well, aren't you? Oh, I was going to put that in the milk. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. Okay, yeah. that'd be good, yeah. Uh, milk and an egg. Yeah. Whipped up with some cinnamon mm -hmm. and then pour that over. And let it soak in. Let it soak in, cook it in the Ridge Monkey, make sure there's enough liquid yep. to make it nice and gooey. Yeah. And then when it's firm enough, flip it and cook yep. the rest and see what happens. Yep. Just being very patient and letting the bread soak all that up. Okay, so we've cut it into four bits. Let's have a bit each, shall we now? Mm. Oh, I wish you could smell this now. Yeah, it's it does smell nice, doesn't it? Delicious. It smells all cinnamony and sweet. Yeah. Okay, give it a try. Mm. Still quite hot, I think. Yeah. Don't burn yourself. Mm. Is it all right? Yeah, well... Delicious. Good. <laughs> Okie dokie. Mmm. Mm. That's yummy, isn't it? It came out far better than I was expecting. That's really tasty, isn't it? Well done. Yum. We had a lovely night here last night. But there's one more thing left to do before we say goodbye to Little Red.
This is the story of our first ever trip in our MV200 camper car, supplied by Sussex Camper Vans. We had to bring Little Red back to where it all began. This is Fell Beacon, where we spent our first night. That was a rather stormy affair, and we didn't have a clue what we were doing. Little Red has been an amazing van, and we're going to miss him. We've learned so much about camper vanning in the last five years, and we've done our best to share that all with you. We know lots of you will be very sad to see Little Red go. But sadly, nothing stays the same in this world and it's time to move on. We still have Little Red and we're going to be selling him soon. And of course, we'll let you know when that's going to happen by posting a video on the channel. If whoever gets Little Red next has as much fun as we've had, then they're in for a treat. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one for whole new adventures in a whole new van. Thank you.